Hi guys, um, let's talk about this one pager final project that we are doing for our free reading book, the book that we got to pick and choose on our own. Um, so this video is going to kind of show you how to get started. It'll go over some of the requirements listed on the handout. So if I were you, I would pull that handout um, up out of RenWeb or I would print that out and have it in front of you um, so that you can kind of refer to it as we talk through the requirements and how to get started. So, are you ready? Here we go. All right, let's go over what this is going to look like. So, our one pager needs to be um, analytical, it needs to be creative. Um, and we're going to do a lot of writing on this as well. Okay, so whether you have a novel or a memoir or a nonfiction, we're all kind of doing the same project with just a few differences based on the genre that you have. Okay, so um, for the project, we want to be focusing on the big elements from the novel. Things like theme, symbolism, conflict, tone and character. So we want to look to see how we can convey these as we choose our quotes, as we write our questions, and we decide on what images to put into our final projects. Um, so requirements for the one pager is that the whole page needs to be filled with color and with text, all right? We don't want any blank white space. Um, so there is this caveat that, um, you know, against text, you know, if you're writing words, you can have white behind it. Okay, we want to make sure that we can read all of the words that you're writing on there. Um, we need to label all of the elements of our one pager um, and include the title, author, and genre of the book on the paper. Okay, those are um, some details that might be easy to miss. So let's make sure that we get those on there. Um, and then it says we want to try to incorporate those as creatively as possible. Um, so maybe you can incorporate pictures or maybe you can write it in a creative way um, or come up with something cool to convey that information. And then it says complete the grid by connecting four elements together. All right, so let's take a look at our grid. So there are a few things that everyone is going to do, um, whether they go horizontal or vertical or diagonal, all right? Um, no matter how you do that, there are some things that everyone is going to do. So everyone is going to be doing quotes, all right? You need to come up with three meaningful quotes and the significance of that quote. What does it infer or symbolize or relate to? Maybe it relates to a conflict or an important setting. You're also going to be including questions. Everyone is doing three big picture questions that look at how and why. So I'll give you an example of some questions in a little bit, but I think as long as you're looking for um, deep questions that use the word how or use the word why, you're going to be on the right track. It says answer, answer thoroughly with an introduced, incited, and explained quote. Okay, the last thing that we're all going to be using um, is images. Everyone is going to have three images that represent the book um, in some way, and those images need to be labeled. Um, so think about different themes, about um, different characters or conflicts, um, and there's actually going to be a lot more options that you can connect to image-wise than I think um, we might expect. I thought I was going to have a hard time with images um, because the book that I read, The Oath, um, was so like metaphysical and mystical, so there weren't a whole lot of objects. But I ended up thinking about kind of the themes and the conflicts in the book, and I was able to come up with um, some images that I'm pleased with. So, where the projects are going to differ, depending on which line you choose, are you're going to do a song, you're going to find song lyrics that connect um, to your novel in some way, or you're going to do a timeline um, where you have a timeline of events from the book. Um, your next one could be setting. You might be illustrating a setting from the book. This could be a nice way to make sure that your page is filled with illustration. Um, 
And the last option is figurative language, where you're looking um, to identify three different examples of any types of figurative language that we've covered this year. And you have a lot of those definitions and examples in your notebook, so crack that sucker open and see what you can find. Okay, so for me personally, I looked at my sheet, I looked at my options, and I considered um, what was, whoop, there it is, what was most reasonable for my novel and what I would be most comfortable doing. So I am going this way. This is going to be my four elements. So I have my quotes, my questions, my images, and then I'm going to create a timeline for um, the events in my novel. All right, so let me um, show you how I have started. Um, I did a lot of brainstorming, but I did not fill it in on this part of the handout. Um, the boxes were a little small for me, so I just ended up um, typing a lot of things. I skimmed back through the book to find um, quotes that jumped out at me to start listing ideas for what images I wanted to incorporate um, and to make sure that I had my timeline events in order. So I did a whole lot of brainstorming. Um, I just didn't do it on that sheet. So if you would like to do your brainstorming um, in an area where you have a little bit more room, that's totally fine. But you need to brainstorm, you need to plan before you just go and attack that paper. Um, so in doing my brainstorming um, and my planning, I realized that there was no way that I was going to be able to fit all of my elements onto one sheet of paper. So what I did and what I would have done if we were in our classroom is I would have gotten you guys bigger construction paper, you know, kind of the big stuff that we did with Animal Farm. So I don't have that and y'all don't have that at home either. So I just took two sheets of paper and I taped them together. So now I've got this nice, ah, <laughs> I got this nice big sheet that I think is going to work much better. Um, I'm going to have room for everything. Um, and it's really not creating more work for me. It's alleviating stress of being able to fit everything. Okay, so if you can, I would tape two papers together to make sure that you have room for everything. All right, I really don't want you to put stuff on the back because that kind of defeats the point of doing the one pager so that we can display them. Um, so I have my title, The Oath. I have my author and my genre, historical fiction. Um, and then I've started to plan out where I want everything to be. So I think I'm going to do my three questions up along the top. And then I've planned my timeline. I'm going to use this kind of swoopy green line across the bottom so that I can lay out my different events um, in order kind of along the bottom. And then I'll do my images and my quotes. I'll kind of mix them in in the middle and see if I can relate any of the quotes or the images um, to anything on the timeline and then maybe try and put those near each other. So that's my plan. Um, I started brainstorming. I wrote down um, the things that I knew I wanted to include. I got my paper and I started to plan out the layout of my one pager to make sure that I had um, room for everything. Um, and then the last thing that I did, um, it's kind of sad, a lot of my art supplies are up at school. I don't have a whole lot at home, but I did find some pastels, some nice pastel crayons, which I haven't used in a really long time, but I love pastels, so I might try and use those for some of my images. Um, and then I have some paints. I have some watercolors and acrylics. I actually have a ton, a ton of paint, guys. I have so much paint. Um, but I just got out a little bit, so maybe I'll do some watercolor for the background. Maybe that could work, especially with all of like the darkness and the flames. Maybe that'll be how I kind of fill my page with color um, in addition to drawing those images. Um, 
Other than that, I just have like pens and a few highlighters. So no matter what you have at your house, dig through drawers, see what you can find, um, use what you have. Maybe you've got some colored paper and you can maybe cut things out if you don't have a lot of markers. But um, be creative, figure out what you have to work with. Um, and I think these are gonna turn out really cool. The last few slides, I hope you noticed um, that on the document I sent you on our final one pager, there were some examples of these one sheets um, on the last few pages of that document. So I have copied those images here to give you some examples of what this final product looks like. So I think we can see uh, this one has like a timeline down here. Um, and we have the title, the author, and the genre of the piece. Here's our one, two, three questions that they kind of uh, got a little squished over there. Um, I think fire was an image along with this, and the stars I think is image number three. And then we have our one, two, three um, quotes over on the other side, and I love how this all turned out. Here are a few more. We can see this person chose a song. They related Night um, to Chain Breaker by Zach Williams. We have question one, two, and ooh, question three down here in the bottom. Um, we have image, we have an image, and then I love the barbed wire as image number three. That's a really, really powerful image for them to include in their piece. Um, so uh, I have one more, one more example, and this looks like um, they did the setting because we have this um, house at Auschwitz, which was a uh, Nazi death camp or concentration camp. Um, and then I like how they kind of did the images as a backdrop, and then they did their writing over them. So that's another option that you guys could think about doing. It's really great. Um, and notice, too, that they have everything labeled. Question one, question two, barbed wire is labeled. Um, so make sure that you guys label all of your elements. Um, so that you get credit for all of the work that you do. I hope this was helpful. I hope this helps you get ready to get started. Um, and email me if you have any questions. I am looking forward to answering all of those as soon as I get them.